Hello and welcome to the movie podcast. Happy Halloween. I'm Anthony and as always, I'm joined by my ghoulish, devilish monstrosities of co-hosts, Daniel and Shay. How you guys doing? I'm a little insulted, I'll be honest with you. But, that uh, was the, that was what I was going for. But it was good. No, I, I you know, I appreciate it. I think that's that's perfect. That perfectly describes who we are. Yes. Um, and it, you're right. This is Halloween today. You are listening to this episode is Halloween Day, All Hallows Eve. And uh, yeah, it's good. It's good to be here. Daniel, do you mind passing me those tissues behind you? Because uh, I'm crying from all the <laughs> horrible things that Anthony's just said. And it's uh, true. these tears won't, won't go away that fast enough. Yeah, those ugly, ghoulish monstrosities. <laughs> I hope they're dead. Yeah, oh, okay. Those schlubs, burned them at the stake. <laughs> I've been waiting, what, two months to do this. That wow, was, that why? That's my comeback line. It took, it took me two months <laughs> to write it. It took two months to write it. Yeah. Two months to write it. <laughs> He's like, I, I can't just call them hosts. No. I gotta call them something else. Yeah, they're what, parasites. What do you guys do for Halloween? That's a great question, Anthony. Um, we're doing some cool interviews on Halloween, yeah. which you'll find out very, very soon who we're talking to. Uh, but no, we are, uh, we're just handing out candy. Yeah. Uh, not dressing up. May carve a pumpkin today. You know, late in the game, I know. But I may do it today. You know, why not? Why not? What about you, Shay? Uh, I usually do like a whole Grinch thing where I go out and just steal candy from people. I'll that's, go in their houses. You know, that's genius. I swear. I'm like, man, Daniel and Shay, yeah. they're the they're the two that would go around the neighborhood yeah. and steal your kids' candy. Yeah, we'd be the one Beat that Michael up. Myers comes to kill. Oh, I, yeah. I, I think we're going to Michael Myers people. I'm like, no, 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 no. no, no, no. Would come, we'd be the ones my, who die early me, in the movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would be, let me set my house on fire, oh. dress up as Michael Myers oh. with a You'd ass. come kill us. Go out in a blaze. Kids, come get some candy. Right. Or a lot of kids dying on this podcast no. today oh no <laughs> see that's the thing 50 50 you either die or you get the or, candy oh okay. I, that was the dark night right <laughs> no no i was just <laughs> you know what's funny though shay did come to my house the other day oh when okay. we were watching for something for review and he had like a bag that looks like a bag that kid would go out trick-or-treating with even though it was like a fresh go bag yeah it was yeah but it was it's full of chocolate sad kid <laughs> but it's no but like sometimes kids take pillowcases they take pillow a reusable grocery the bag um and it was full of chocolate and i was just like I didn't question it because I was like, oh, I'm going to eat some of this. But I was also just like, hold on a second. Where did Shay just get this random bag of candy and shut, chocolate? Shut to my grocery store. <laughs> oh, did I get did I get any? You weren't here. You oh, weren't here. But like, you're like, oh, I only come once a week. Like, uh, loser. Oh, I was going to say like Pennywise, but that's, you know, gas prices are up. Gas years? prices are 27. up. 27. You know, that's true. You know, they're they're up. Yeah, you, time you, to buy, you, gotta, you gotta work with me. Time here. to buy electric, okay? Huh? Well, yeah, th those went up too. Like things go out. Like, <laughs> Electricity's going up. You know, if enough of our audience buys some T-shirts and some, maybe I yeah. can get like a, an electric motor. It's shaver. installed in your car. <laughs> electric motor shaver? Yeah. Wait, are you going to ride that here? I don't understand. Well, the, He's got to start small. He's got to figure out what electricity yeah, yeah, is. Yeah, I got to shave my beard first, and yes. then I'm going to come over. He smooths the uh, drive experience. That's funny. Yeah. You know, but it's nice being back together again. I mean, oh, this always. is our second week in a row. Back to back. Back to back. B to B. B B to B. No, that's not, that's not what it is. Bring that booty. Oh, well, yeah. that's, wait, that's a that's an office two, reference. though. Sorry? I said the number two, didn't I? Yeah, B, but I said B to B. Oh yeah, yeah. To T B T B. Ladies and gentlemen, the show is now ending. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> B to B. I just watched that episode of The Office too. That's why it was funny. Nice. I heard it's a good show. It's a, it's an alright show. I I wouldn't recommend it. It's not very popular. No. Are you are you done? Yes. Okay. Good. Yeah. Uh, As always, you can catch you. Anthony Brent. hates the banter. He hates, wow. the banter. No. he hates the banter. So that was no, you. I'm writing it's, in. That was you. Was in. <laughs> As always, you can catch a brand new episode of the Movie Podcast every single Monday and watch out throughout the week for our review episodes on all the latest movies and series. Make sure to follow us at the Movie Podcast on Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, and Letterbox. And don't forget to leave us a review on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and join our Discord and write into... The at hello at the movie podcast.ca. Shay, what's what's our question of the week on, on Discord right now? Uh, our question of the week this week was what is your like a fall favorite film of yours? You know, something that you just you put on during the fall and you just feel comfortable. Funny that Daniel and I literally at the exact same time wrote the exact same answer. Oh, really? What did you and you write? Oh, you can follow you can find that answer on our Discord. Oh, okay. Oh. We won't spoil it here. I Go to our Discord it. if you want to know what fall movie is our favorite. Yeah. <laughs> Go hey, to our Discord right that, now. I'm, I'm serious. Go to the bottom of the link of the thing that you're on. Yeah. And you'll see our Discord there. Join it and you'll be like, whoa, 
both Shabazz and Daniel picked the same movie at the same time, they must be in love. <laughs> or they must be weird. <laughs> Stay tuned. Find I, out I, for more. I would do both. Both are both, both are, are correct. And and both are what's correct. yours, Anthony? Uh, fall movie. You got me right on. Like I don't. I, I would say like it's probably going to be something scary. Oh, okay. Like the Exorcist. That's I, will I said. Wait, I said like fall, comfort, fall, like comfort, feel good film. comfort movie. Yeah, you want to put Let's on the Exorcist. Put on the Exorcist. Yeah. Maybe think What's about your answer and write right in the Discord. <laughs> Goodwill Hunting. That's, that's a good, good one. Yeah. That's a great one. Goodwill good Hunting is a solid that's, one. That's a, I'd put that's, that up there that's, for sure. That's, that takes place in the fall, right? It yeah, just, but even, even, that, doesn't, even that it feels like a fall movie. It feels movie. like a fall film. Yeah, it's a yes. feel-good movie. Yeah. It feels warm. It feels warm. Um, you can also watch and listen to us on YouTube, Yeah, which uh, is amazing because we've, I think our subscriber has like skyrocketed to 790 subscribers so i know that's a little but we're hey we're building up we're building up we're really building we're up. we're starting on really late in this game yeah in on terms the of the world. youtube world yeah. so a thousand by the end of the year that's the goal that was the goal from january yeah and we're all, we're so close so if you haven't please subscribe to us on youtube you'll like what you see yeah all our interviews are there as well as our uh, faces when we do our reviews and you'll see new faces this week too because we have some special guests but i'm gonna send it to uh daniel for announcements yeah that's good it's a that's a, a nice tease you did there i like that uh yeah this week on the movie podcast we have a lot of episodes coming your way uh but not sorry not a lot but a lot of a lot of good stuff coming your way uh on november 3rd at noon eastern time you'll be able to hear our spoiler free review of God of War Ragnarok. We are all playing it on PlayStation 5. Thank you to PlayStation for sending us the code for that review. Um, but yeah, we have that sent to us. Thank you so much. We are having a wonderful time with it. We gave our impressions last week on the show. So make sure you tune in for that. Uh, later on this week, we'll have another special guest joining us, another very special interview uh, that we can't wait to share. We have a lot of special guests joining us over the next couple weeks, so it's going to be a really fun time heading into November, heading into the holiday season. We'll also be having some interviews coming out for Wakanda Forever, so stay tuned for all of that as well, too. And our review for Wakanda Forever will be available on November 8th at noon as well. So you'll be able to catch that Next week on the movie podcast, that is Tuesday, November 8th at noon Eastern time. We'll have our Wakanda Forever review. Uh, the last thing I want to remind you about, we are sponsored by Movie right now. We're having a great time using that streaming service. So if you want to get a whole month of incredible cinema for free, check out our show notes below. Click on our affiliate link there and you won't regret it, especially for this time of year. If you want to find your next fall feel good movie, head to Movie. It's free. It's free. For a month, it's free. How could you not? How could you not? How that? could you not? Yeah. How could you not? How can she slap? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I, I had I have one. I had to use it right there. But there you go. That's all I got for you, announcements-wise. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about more throughout the week and what's going on and what it's looking like. But as of right now, today or today you're listening to this, this is a brand new episode. Thursday, we'll have our God of War Ragnarok review. And then Friday... Or maybe Wednesday. Depending on when we get our footage, we'll have a very special uh, interview coming out. So stay tuned for that. Amazing. I'm looking forward to that God of War review. I can't I'm, wait. I'm so happy to talk about it. Oh, so you didn't like the game? Okay. All right. Well, no, what? <laughs> we can't talk about it, man. I'm so excited to talk about how much I hated it. No! Or loved it. Oh. Stay tuned. That's great. That's good. You guys ready? Let's do oh, it, man. Let's ready. get into the news. <laughs> Nailed it. Oh, man. Oh, so good. I felt like a spirit came out of me it did. when I did it. Happy Halloween. Oh. Happy Ooh. Halloween. This is, the, this is the episode we kill Shay, right? Finally. Well, why me, though? Yeah. Episode I, 148 I bring, is gone. I bring the we're, spicier, We're though. closer to, this, to the window, and you're not, so. What, what does, does that mean? mean? Yeah. That's how I figured. <laughs> does that mean Daniel you can give... jump out? <laughs> and Shay, I... take the door. <laughs> yeah, I'll just take the door. <laughs> um, but yeah, it, that's so funny. I, I was noticing this week. That you know, this is episode 148 of the movie wow. podcast. We're very close to episode 150, yeah. which will hit unless we take two months off again. <laughs> um, but we also have released over 450 episodes of our show. That's including That's our too reviews, many. our commentary. We should just retire now. I think we've we've made our fans suffer enough. Yeah, 450 yeah. hours. That's of, no, I would no more. more. That. Yeah, more. Yeah, I would say more. Way more. Way, Way more. more. Yeah, nay more. more. Nay more. <laughs> I think we hit like at least. 2,000 hours. Probably. We'll yeah, have to calculate it one day. Yeah. We'll calculate it all. We've done day. like commentaries for movies. Yeah. We've done long episodes for stuff. Yeah. 
we've had episodes of the show go almost three hours. So. Yeah. 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 Speaking of which, three hours, we've got some three hour stories in here, too. Oh, my oh, goodness. The first story Warner Brothers DC, they finally did it. They finally did something right. It's like a kid learning how to walk. And you kind of clap as <laughs> oh the parent. Goodness. Oh, you did it. You, you did, did it. it. This is a big... Hey, this kid a, learned how to banger. fly. Let's be honest. DC oh, shocker. Big. James Gunn, Peter Safran to lead film, TV, and animation division. This is coming from Boris Kidd and Aaron Couch of THR. In a stunning turn of events, filmmaker James Gunn and producer Peter Safran have been tapped to lead DC film, TV, and animation efforts as co-chairs and co-CEOs of DC Studios a newly formed division at Warner Brothers that will replace DC Films. The unprecedented move in which a top director will assume a top executive post marks the end of months-long search by Warner Brothers Discovery CEO David Saslav to replace DC film boss Walter Hamada. According to a report from Neil Trutz at Above the Line, Warner Brothers Discovery boss David Saslav approached none other than Kevin Feige himself to run the DC Universe earlier this year, to which Feige politely declined. He probably said, hell no. James Gunn also revealed that Feige was the first person he told about his new DC job. That's crazy. I didn't know that last part about Kevin Feige. Like, that's that's pretty bold to go to you go Kevin to the king. Feige, who's <laughs> like the king at Marvel. And yeah. I, I feel like he's going to be there for a really long time because I just think he's passionate about the Marvel Cinematic Universe. But to go and to poach him and say... Hey, you want come, you, you want to come, come to work wanna come with to us? DC? I'm like, that's such a fucking ballsy move. It, you know, it. you you look at what obviously like, I'm not surprised they approached him. You not know, at yeah. all. You know, Kevin Feige started off. You know, he was very much in the Warner Brothers world. He yeah. came up with, like under Richard Donner, who gave us the first Superman movie, and to see what he's done, Kevin Feige is the most important producer in the world, and if not all time like he's in that conversation for what he's created he has the most successful film franchise of all time you're firing on all cylinders the majority of the people that work with you are happy and want to keep working with you you know we'll have the we'll have occasionally oh this director stepped down or this director moved away but the majority of the people who are working with him want to work with him so i I understand why they approached him but why would he leave the golden palace for uh for what's going on right now he's one of the few producers that it's not about the money. I mean, obviously it is, but it's not. It's all the creative process that yeah. he puts in. So you have someone who's a producer, but not only coming from the business end of the deal, but combining it with the creative process, that is how you have a successful producer. A lot of producers that you see making movies, it is just it is just finances, it is budgets, it's it's managerial stuff. And then you get a and you get something that could be a mishmash of a lot of stuff. And honestly, honestly, that's what DC has been for a long time. Yeah, and and now you have a you have a duo coming in, Peter Safran, who's produced some of the best DC films in the last few years. You have James Gunn, who's given us Peacemaker this year, which feels so long ago, which was probably one of the best. And Suicide Squad. Uh, no, but well, like I'm talking about Peacemaker for this year. Was that was, that, was Suicide Squad this year? No, last year. Suicide Squad oh was last year. Oh yeah, my yeah. goodness. Peacemaker was in January, and yes. then the Suicide Squad was in August. He gave us that one-two punch. Yeah. Suicide Squad, which is beloved by everyone and was did amazing with critics and also yeah it didn't light the box office on fire but it was also that it had a crux in between it had a crux man um why wouldn't they want to have someone who's passionate who understands how the marvel cinematic universe works who could tell larger stories like why wouldn't you you have two dynamite duos who are coming in now who are going to hopefully steer the ship and i'm i'm curious do they clean house or do they try and make what's going on work? Well, it's interesting because what's what's interesting about this deal, though, is that it's a four-year exclusivity deal with James Gunn. So I wonder, does that mean he can only do DC films directing, producing, etc. for the next four years? Or after four years, do they get someone else to do the job? Because four years really isn't a lot of time. I don't think... I, 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 didn't, I didn't even see the exclusivity Yeah, part. it's four years. Four years exclusive. So I feel like it's him being locked in exclusively doing dc stuff for four years but still staying on the job after four yes years. Yeah. yeah that's like that's still, what i would hope because you can't do anything studio. in four years yeah, yeah. still head of the studio because like four years it will, it's going to take them four years to correct it <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly when you think about At it right? minimum yeah so this is the best possible move you'll you'll never find another kevin feige no so you why not better just to recreate him absolutely gun who 
He's been working with Marvel for almost 10, for 10 years now. Like if you're talking about like when he got hired and everything yeah. and Peter Safran, who obviously he has a great rapport with. And I, I love with, when somebody asked Kevin, somebody asked James Gunn this week on Twitter, like, do you like, so do you hate Marvel and, and Kevin Feige now? And he's like, no, like uh, people, are, uh, people are so dumb. People like, always want to pit them against each other. And, you and, need the competition. These, this is how these, you need competition you do. like this between these two types of studios so they can create amazing things for us yeah so dumb stop being dumb like people want to always put them against each other and yeah. james gunn even said he's like one a dollar earned for dc isn't a dollar away from marvel we're both like we're both striving to do the same thing and that's create incredible things for people to go to the theaters to watch you know and and kevin feige at the premiere wakanda forever said he's like you know james gunn has a lot of work to do between now and may for guardians but i'll be first in line for whatever he does at dc and i believe that because they have a great relationship with one another. Yeah. So, James Gunn, do you think he was always in the running to be this executive person? Because I know Dan Lin was supposed to be the the head of the the DCEU, and right. kind of, but he kind of backed off. Batgirl was canceled and a lot. Of, I think that kind of put a perspective on him. Do you think James Gunn was always there, or was that something that he decided in the weeks after Dan Lin not taking that role of the um, DCEU lead? It's a great question. I think James Gunn was always someone that was in the conversation. And, you know, we it's it's interesting because we spoke about like a long time ago how like a universe shouldn't be under the vision of like like Zack Snyder or something like that. Like we shouldn't have a director dictating how the whole universe looks. But this is different because he's now the head of this of DC Studios. He's the he's the head of the studio, which is just going to be writing the ship and and doing that. So I'm curious if James Gunn, I, I feel like this was in the works for a little while, but Warner Brothers was also trying to figure out a different path in case it didn't end up closing. Like the deal didn't end up closing. Mm-hmm. James Gunn also has like this, a track record of taking characters that are not well known and yeah. also bringing them into a world where they become these pop icons. Yeah. Guardians of the Galaxy and Suicide Squad and a lot of those characters, um, like Polka Dot Man, not being well known, but yeah. now being kind of like having a cult following behind him. Where do you see James Gunn's vision for the DCEU? What are what are his first five films? Yeah, but DC, it's called the DCU now. DCU. Finally, I DCU. always hated the actually the extended universe. Like, what does DCU. that mean? DCU, DCU, and it's called DC Studios. Like, it's already it's already in a better spot than yeah, it was already. a week ago. <laughs> yeah, you know. Uh, yeah, I'm curious. You, you guys, I, I came prepared with some movies that I would want him to. You go, uh, you to go, bring shave. Yeah. I just, I just think at, at right now. I mean, you have DC in a very interesting spot. You've got the Joker sequel coming out. You've got Batman in, in the works, and then you've got the other stuff kind of happening. Right. So where where does he go? I think I think Gunn kind of well, he has to first settle in. Obviously, you know, probably moving his boxes into the office right. first. And then from there, really, you're looking at, okay, cool, we have Superman, we have Batman, we have Wonder Woman. Let's start to make these films kind of like how we've made the, the best of the DC, where it's that combination of, of adult humor with still some fun. I think they're going to skew not as much as into the dark world anymore, like as they're going to go dark with these movies, but they're going to go a little bit more on the mature side, whereas Marvel is really, you know, across the board, it, it works for almost any age group. I think DC is going to try to stick with the we're in the much older crowd. Yeah, I can see them doing that. I mean, Marvel will have movies like Wakanda Forever, which we'll talk about, which is a lot more of an older film, a lot more mature film. You have Eternals, which is another but also one. still kids can watch it. But and still not kids feel, can yeah. watch it. Yeah, but I'm, it, I'm not saying it, any, any yeah. insult at all to Marvel. No, 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 no it's no, a, it's a no, not at all. Like, no, yeah. no, no, I didn't take it as that. Um, but yeah, I, I think for myself, I mean, you have our next story, which we'll talk about, which very much ties into this one. The first thing on Warner Brothers list on James Gunn list, I hope, is Superman. Like you have Henry Cavill, who's officially back, reintroduced him in Black Adam. Where is that going to go from here? So give us a Superman movie. At at this point, you have to you have to incorporate the Zack Snyder worlds because that's what's been established already. You're not starting from the ground up. I feel like he's going to do what you kind of did with Suicide Squad, where it's like. Here is characters that you saw in the first Suicide Squad in his first Suicide Squad, Suicide Squad in 2016. So I was just Who's like, phone? I'm like, what is this? Because it's weird. Because it's the Suicide Squad and the Suicide Squad. Right. Here is characters that you know from the 2016 movie and the 2021 movie. Yes, it's tied, but we're not really 
time. we're not talking about that anymore. Yeah. We've moved on. So it's like I, I think with Superman going forward, you could just tell hopefully an amazing Superman story. Yeah. You find a great director for it. You find a great writer for it. You have Henry Cavill who looks amazing in the role. You do that. Superman is first and foremost on my list. Mm-hmm. Um, I'd also love to see Static Shock. I know that's a character that has very much been talked about saying they're going to do a movie or saying they're going to do a series. I, I think that's a great character to introduce for younger audiences. Did it get canceled? I can't remember now. I, I don't know. It's one of those weird ones that were, it was like an HBO, was an HBO Max thing. Right. So, I feel like it did. Uh, I hope not. I hope not. I hope I, not also. But yeah, Static Shock uh, would be an awesome character to have. I'd love to see him. Teen Titans would be another one. But again, we're in a weird spot with DC where it's like, do, do the Titans exist? Does Batman have a Robin in this universe? Is Ben Affleck still Batman in this universe? And that's that's the confusing thing because you look at Black Adam and it's like, clearly these heroes are popular in the world because in Kondok, this kid is getting posters of all these different superheroes like Batman, Superman. He's addicted. You know what I mean? But like, we've never, but in Justice League and in in uh, Batman vs Superman, Batman's like a myth in Gotham. Yeah. So it's like, which which is it? Is he like a worldwide hero or is he not? So I don't I don't know who's been established, who's been not already. But yeah, there's a there's a bunch of different players that I'd love to see get. You know, Green Lantern would be another awesome movie to hopefully get one day. We know the series just got revamped again, so now it's just going to focus on John Stewart. Um, and what was the last one I had on my list? I will tell you right now. Um, oh yeah. The Suicide Squad too, like another Suicide Squad from James Gunn. Absolutely. Yeah. Why not? Yeah. How about you? What do you think, Anthony? Um, I think Superman is the first thing they need to really drive home because I think that is the image for DC. They need that hero. You need a hero. You yeah. need that hero. And he is going to be that hero, especially if they're going to go down the route like an end game type of event where it's movies that lead to something that's big and grand. Right. They need Superman and Superman is, you know, the most recognizable person or character ever. Yeah. You can't kill him again though. Cause he's already died. <laughs> right. But like they, they need to do something. They need to do an infinity, a crisis on the infinite earths yeah. where they do a multiverse storyline, which would be amazing. And I think James Gunn would be great at f- fulfilling that dream that a lot of people yeah. would love to see. And I know they did it in the TV aspect, but let's really drive it yeah. in a cinematic world. Do you think we'll see... Do you think now that Flash is kind of doing that, that's going to kind of fill that? And that was my my next question. How does Peter and, and James deal with people who are currently in the limelight like um, Ezra Miller in The Flash and his troubles and where that franchise is going to go? Like this is now a different. He's he's been a director and and, and producer. Now they're they're a different thinking. Now they have to be more corporate thinking and for sure they have to have that mentality. How does he switch over and become the boss? Right. Like how does he now take care of people like Ezra and make sure that the next people that they hire don't have these situations that kind of lead into right the Warner Brothers world of you know hurt of hurt yeah it's interesting though because i mean james gunn knows what it, again i'm not comparing the acts of ezra miller and james gunn no. but i am saying james gunn knows what it's like to be fired off a project right yeah. four years ago he was fired off of directing gardens of the galaxy volume three and now because here he is comments, right because of his, his comments from 10 years ago yeah. from like his for his like stupid jokes that he was making but here he is now the head of DC Studios, you know what I mean. So I don't know how he's going, what he's going to do to hand, what to, to handle Ezra Miller in that situation. I honestly think they're just waiting for that movie to come out to act as a reset of the universe. And after post, there's going to be a post Flash, where it's like everything after the Flash is like a new start. It's a fresh start. It's a different universe. We could have Superman in that world that never died. You know what I mean? They could introduce a different Batman or if they're going to keep using Ben Affleck, they could do that. But I really think the flash is going to be that reset of the universe where they don't have to worry about continuity. They're going to be like, Nope, this changed because of, um, flashpoint, right? You no know, flashpoint happened. This is a different universe, different stakes, different characters. We could recast things. Now, none of not everything that happened before doesn't matter anymore. You know, Shay, you, you look like you had something to say. No, no, I was just going to say like, I'm, I'm excited for this future. I'm 
carefully optimistic. I think I just I feel like we've been burnt so many times when it comes to DC. I know everything right now on paper looks amazing. I just really, really hope it goes how we want it to. I'm I, I think Daniel and I were discussing this the other day. Like DC is no longer in the game of playing catch up with Marvel. Like that ship has sailed. You can't do it. Yeah, you can't you can't do that anymore. Like that's gone now. Now it's about carving your own path. Mm-hmm. How are you going to do that? You because. You're, you're going to probably have two Batmans in your world, which is fine. And that's something that only you can do. Not not, uh, not Marvel, even though they have obviously multiple characters. But that's not the point. DC will do that and they'll never even have them meet. Like, we're not going to get Robert Pattinson's Batman meeting with Ben Affleck's Batman. At least, I don't think so. No, I don't think. I, I can't see why that would happen. No, and I think the, the one thing that I was going to say, too, is that moving forward, I don't think James Gunn, I don't think they said he's not going to be producing the Joker sequel. I don't think I so. I think they said that he's not. That's, that's already like on the way. Right? Yeah, that, so. that's something that he's like, they're making that movie. It's an, it's a, its own kind of label type thing, as is the Batman. Yeah. Both those films didn't have that DC EU intro either, which no. I think they're going to probably make a new one. I, they Once should. DC, they should make a DC Studios one. They need to. Um, it looks the exact same as the Marvel one. It's the Marvel one, yeah. But, uh, but DC so much smaller, the letters, so yeah. much less letters, like trying to cram everything think in. forever to come out. Um, no, but I, I think, um, yeah, Matt Reeves is going to keep doing what he's doing. Yeah. He's going to keep creating his Absolutely. universe, creating his his shows, his side characters, keep developing the Matt Reeves verse. And then Todd Phillips is going to have his Joker and whatever comes of that. Those it. are separate. People know those are separate. And then now James Gunn is going to come in. I think really we're going to see what he's going to do post Flashpoint is where uh, we're going to see. Does Flash come out before? It comes out after Aquaman, right? Or before? This would be so many Isn't it shifts. before? Doesn't it come out in March? That's a great question. I think Aquaman is in March. Oh, I thought I thought it was Flash then Aquaman. I I thought the Flash. Let's let's find out. Another thing that I wanted to say is like he, uh, James Gunn doesn't start this role until May of 2023. Right. So he's probably planning a lot of stuff, you know, off the record type of thing. But really, we won't see his vision come out for at least a year and a half to two years. Yeah, because. You know, once he's in that chair, and even for for Peter, who is now who's still working with the DC DCU, not E, yeah, DCU, um, he's probably pre planning and doing all his stuff. Um, James Gunn is the creative mind; he's probably going to be the visionary. Do you think like he's going to do those press events that we're so used to from Marvel, where we'll have like the next ten years yes. of films? We're going to actually see those things happen, and they're going to be what we what the the universe the, will the, look like yeah 100 okay. percent. like again james knows how important those things are he has a decade worth of going to comic cons and seeing what the hall h events are like or seeing what marvel putting on their their events are like at, at d23 they're going to start campaigning and doing that kind of stuff and putting a plan forward i can't see why they would bring james and peter on if they're not going to give people a roadmap because right now um the flash is coming out so the next the next couple films for dc looks like this so we had black adam just came out a couple weeks ago shazam fury of the gods comes out in march of 2023 the flash comes out in june of 2023 we'll have blue beetle in august which is the hbo max film um and then we have aquaman and the lost kingdom coming out december of 2023 um, and then after that, we have Joker, which is 20, October 2024. Um, and then we have really nothing else on the DCEU or the DCU side. It's going to take a little while to get used to saying that. But nothing else on the DCU side. So I think once James takes reins next summer, I don't think it will be DC fandom. I think it will just be some type of event that they do. It's going to be like, hey, here's what the next five years looks like. This is what we're aiming for. This is the directors we have coming in to do this. And Let's get people excited about DC because right now I'm excited about to, to see what Matt Reeves does. I'm looking forward to see the Joker sequel, but Aquaman and the flash as much as I want to see them. I'm also just like, is this just more of the DC EU, which we've gotten before Snyderverse, you know, that world. But I, but I really do think the flash is going to be the reset of the universe. And I, and, and it I, makes uh, sense because it of makes his sense, character yeah. and what he can do and what we've seen in the comic books, how he can restart you know universes right that, it makes sense to like restart the universe yeah. we know ezra is flash. not coming back either after this flash movie yeah they said he's not this is the last movie they're doing with him so <laughs> he got his one movie after a decade a decade after being cast in the role 
and that's it. So I, I honestly think they're just going to that movie's going to come out, reset the universe, and then I think I feel like Jason Momoa will probably be. I'm going to Flash. He's going to play the Flash next. Yeah, no, I think, think he'll stay as Aquaman. Like I think he plays such a. It sucks for Jason Momoa because he's such a great yeah. Aquaman. Like he's a rebranding of Aquaman, and I would love to see him continue playing that character and I I go, can, uh, maybe I, maybe they'll keep him you know i would love to see him stay on but again that movie is another one with everything with amber heard it's just like man dc cannot catch a break yeah. with everything they had going on but yeah i think i think jason momo will hopefully stay on and james wan will keep getting to play with him we can that finally world. get the batman the ben affleck batman the dark knight batman that grizzly that grizzly like that arkham asylum movie that he was yeah. working on yeah and joe uh mangelio as um deathstroke who deathstroke? knows man who yeah. knows I want to know what happened to Robin. That's like my whole thing. Like, yeah. What happened to Robin? And Give me a proper we start the family, Joker. you know? We forgot about Jared Leto's Joker in that universe. I keep forgetting. Yeah. He's there. Let's, He's there. Let's destroy him and rebrand him. <laughs> Again, the Flashpoint is going to reset all that. Yeah. It's going to make it that those movies never existed. On to our next news story. Liam Hemsworth is picking up Gerald's sword for The Witcher Season 4. This is coming from Chancellor Agard of Tadum. Ta-dum. Ta-dum. I was when I was pre-reading this, I was I thought, who the hell is Chancellor Agard? Who's giving them who's giving themselves that name? But I'm guessing it was just this whole Witcher thing that they're going for with Netflix. It could be. Yeah. Or or they could be named Chancellor. Maybe that's their name. Oh, I thought they were like a chancellor. <laughs> no. like, you know, like here he here he no. that that type that's of That's probably just their name, dude. <laughs> You know, like I'm some so people are sorry, named Chancellor. You know, some people are named like Jesus, but that's just their name. <laughs> I am so sorry. Yeah, Chancellor Agard is their actual name. Oh, I am so sorry. <laughs> Mom and Dad uh, got together, named them Chancellor. That's so funny. My, <laughs> They're like Chandler, not Chancellor. <laughs> Uh, breaking news from the continent. While The Witcher Season 3 hasn't debuted yet, it has already been renewed for a fourth season. But there's a change coming. In Season 4, Liam Hemsworth will step in as the titular monster hunter Geralt of Riva, the role Henry Cavill originated in the first three seasons. My journey as Geralt of Riva, Rivia has been filled with both monsters and adventurous, and alas, I will be laying down my medallion and my sword... For season four, said Cavill in a statement. In my stead, the fantastic Mr. Liam Hemsworth will be taking up the mantle of the White Wolf. As with the greatest of literary characters, I pass the torch with reverence for the time spent embodying Geralt and the enthusiasm to see Liam take the most fascinating and nuanced of men. Liam, good sir, this character has such a wonderful depth to him. Enjoy diving in and seeing what you can find. There's a long way to go before Hemsworth picks up the sword, The Witcher, Blood Origin, a spin-off of that a spin-off that explores the creation of the first prototype Witcher, premieres December 25th, and The Witcher season 3 will follow shortly after in the summer of 2023. Now, I'm not a big Witcher fan or or lore of of the Witcher world. So, I know that Henry Cavill was playing him. This is a famous game. A lot of people like it. I think I watched the first... I did watch the first season. Um, I haven't watched the second season yet. But this is a huge... I guess a huge loss for Netflix and a huge win, I guess, for DC. Because it seems like Henry Cavill is going to be positioning himself to play Superman. Again, yeah. He's going to be busy. In in, in the the future, uh... right? Like, this is something that he... Like, he came out with this whole... uh, Instagram video talking about how he's coming back and like how he's going to be 100% committed to Superman and how he's really going to bring love and joy and yeah glory Hope. to this to this hero. It's sucks to see him leave The Witcher, but it's amazing to see where he's going to go. Right. Now we get Liam Hemsworth who's going to be playing this character what we would say what in 2025 2026 yeah i would say like 2020 maybe 2024. earliest is four, earliest is 24. earliest but i i could probably see 2025 um yeah it's it's interesting because you know henry cavill was gerald like that was him he loves the books that they're the games are obviously based on he loves the games but he he was this character everyone loved henry as Daryl to Rivia. A lot. A lot. And what we've seen, again, I've seen only the first couple episodes of the show. I'm like, this isn't for me. Yeah. Um, But I could definitely see the quality that Netflix put into it and the work that they put into it, right? It's one of their flagship shows. Yeah. 
So to lose a star like Henry Cavill, uh, again, Liam did put out a statement as well, too, because it was like a joint statement they put out. People are not too happy right now. No, it's 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 been so... And what's interesting is that it's been like a resounding no like not like yeah, everybody that like no. even people that are like generally positive online they're like look i get it but no like like he like and at the same time it's it's no like i'm not trying to insult liam hemsworth you know he's he's had a career for himself it's just this is not the shoes that i imagined him filling at any point in his career yeah like you could have you could have had him play a different witcher like you didn't have to have him but again where they positioned themselves with the story it wouldn't have made sense to go a different route. But right? I'm also like, in, I'm also in the camp of you know don't knock it till you try it. So hey, right. if it if it they well they are doing that unless something crazy happens and it comes out there is a chance it could be good. So for everybody, they've made decision decision. They see something in him. Let him try it out. If you don't like it, vote with your wallet. As we always say in this case with Netflix, vote with your time spent. Don't right. watch it then. Yeah. Mm. There's also been a lot of behind the scenes things happening over the couple over the last few years where Henry hasn't been too happy with the writing of the show. Oh, okay. Where he's been very much wanting to give Gerald a lot more personality that he has from the books. Right. But in the show, they're making him a lot more stoic and a lot more just quiet. Where in the books, he is constantly talking, you're constantly in his head hearing what's going on. So I know in the last like I've been seeing from articles that have been coming out, he hasn't been too happy with the show's direction with the writing. So maybe he saw this as an opportunity to that. Get he out. wasn't happy with where the show was going. I'm going to move on. I have Superman. You know, my ex is calling me. I'm going to go <laughs> back and I'm going to go back and uh, throw it all the way for my ex. Right. And, now. and he's doing the, uh, yeah, that's a good one. Um, the Guy Ritchie film as well. Yes. So I forgot the name of that movie. Something Guy Ritchie, I think it has a Guy Ritchie. Name. Yeah, like yeah. like three three like bedlams in a in, three in a bedlams witches in a lock stock. In yeah, a, lock stock. And a gentleman. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and a gentleman. Yeah, four squires and yeah. an admirer. But it's yeah. interesting though because you know I think one of the biggest things we've been seeing complain about is like man of all the of all the Hemsworths to choose again, but like you know Chris is busy being Thor, uh, you know, and doing other roles. Liam um, has had a career of his own, but I think. You know, if this opportunity is there, I'm I'm wishing him all the best. I never want to wish anyone any ill will, but he does have a big, you know, sword hilt to fill, right? Wow. Sorry, really quickly, and I agree with what you're saying because that's very, very true. That's no, spot on. The name of this movie is much weirder than we thought. What is it? The Ministry of Ungentlemanly Warfare. Oh, Gentleman was in it. Yes. Yeah. I mean, that was like you. You would. So be it's a gang film. Nine in, in times England. out of ten, it's going to get gentlemen. But yeah. man, I didn't expect that name. When does it come out? Uh, tomorrow. Uh, no, it's <laughs> Isaac Gonzalez and uh, Henry Cavill. And I mean, they haven't started working on it yet, but let's see. Like, truthfully, for Li- Liam looks like the character. Like, he has the eyes. He has the bone structure. He yeah, he's a big put on, dude, he's right? A, put on the muscles. So he's like, what, the second cutest of the Hemsworth, right? If we if we were <laughs> yeah. to base it off of looks. The second best Hemsworth. Um, maybe acting-wise, he hasn't been... 100%, but, like, you got to give him a break. Like, let him play the, the, 100%. the character. 100%. Let this then, guy come in and not have to worry about all the haters. Like, and, like, l- let us have Superman. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Waiting. You, know? you guys get you your Witcher. Yeah. yeah, you had your Witcher. Yeah, you had Witcher. You guys had three seasons of The Witcher. Yeah. We are need, they, like, we need a Superman like, movie. At the end of the day, they're all, like, the same, right? They all have, like, the long... They're all witching. They all <laughs> they have the long gray hair. They witch. <laughs> They go, they have sex, you know. They, they live, kill I some think monsters. They have, yeah, they kill monsters. You know. And have I'm sex pretty more. sure Liam can do that and, like, say a couple of lines. Yeah, he'll be good. And But it's, you know, but Henry does have a gravitas to him. Right. Um, And I was, we were seeing a tweet the other day. It was like, they have, like, seven, they're seven years apart in age. But yeah. it's like, Henry feels, but Henry has also been Henry for, like, 20 years. Like, if you look yeah. at Henry Cowell from 2006, he looks the exact same. Yeah. Like, he's, he's looked like henry cavill for like since he was like 18 years old yeah i recently i recently saw him uh at the enola holmes uh press yeah the the, the, the so the, excited for that the, movie the viewing way. for it the screening and he he literally looked like fucking superman it's like if i'm not superman at this point i am now yeah. he had like the whole like curls going down he's he flying the, the, he flew the grizzled in yeah. beard and a little bit of a mustache that kind of looked like fallout um he has like a presence and i'm so surprised that he hasn't been utilized so much more. He was amazing in Mission Impossible. Like, I'm looking at my Mission Impossible follow poster right now, and I'm like, he is so damn good in this he, movie. Why he was phenomenal in that movies? Movie. That's what I'm trying to say. Like, why is he playing 
Geralt in the first place. Like at the end of the day, that's great, but like this guy should be playing. He should be in like movies like Babylon and yeah, he and should all these he, he cinematic was, films that we've kind of come across in the past three years. I really yeah. liked him in The Man from Uncle. I thought he yeah, was good. and people Uncle. people were saying he he should be the next Bond as well too. Yeah, he really showed in you that know? movie. But you know, I but he, you're right, and I think he was so burnt by Superman and where that was going. He took the Witcher on knowing that, okay, my Superman days are most likely done. And he hasn't, for so long, he was quiet about being Superman. He wasn't, like, it was like, I'm doing these other projects. The Witcher shows takes a long time to make, right? Like, that's a right. year of your life. So if he's done three seasons of it, that's three three years of his life that he's been working on it. Break from COVID. He was doing Mission Impossible. He did Justice League. And that was a nightmare, that production. Right. So it's like... He was just, I think, just waiting for the call to come back, and he was ready to drop it all. And makes me happy because I'm like, man, we get a we get a Superman movie hopefully now from him in the mm-hmm. next couple of years. But it sucks for the Witcher fans, and I know how I feel about recasting. It's always like a weird, a weird feeling when someone is recast in a role, and especially the lead of a show. So I totally understand what Witcher fans are feeling right now too, and wanting to have um, that continuity in the show, but. You know, this is the nature of the business as well, too. Things yeah. like this happen, so it's bittersweet, right? Yeah, that's that's the whole thing. I wonder if it's going to be something that they address his, you know, his different look in the show, or if they're just going to be like, nope, this is just this is who plays Gerald now. That's where we're going. It was very two thousand nineties two thousands. You know, yeah. like when oh, this is the new Batman, Val Kilmer. You're like, okay, okay, like sure. you just deal with it and enjoy the show. Yeah, because you really enjoy it for the writing as well, right? Yeah, like you're getting something that you'll get used to it, right? Yeah, it's like. You know, people don't like change. Just let it happen. Don't live in your box. Live outside the box. Okay. Oh, I like it. Um, he's dropping some uh, some some wisdom on us. We're on this moving Halloween, on. Right? To Guy starts uh, hosting the episodes, and all of a sudden, quick, smart. Yeah, I'm fucking the wizard of. Never mind. Okay. I take it all back. I take it all back <laughs> so <laughs> quick. <laughs> you, I, I was complimenting you. I was like, this guy's smart. And then you couldn't even compliment yourself. Um, <laughs> quick updates. Kelly Marcel set to direct next installment of. You got this. Venom 3. I'm trying to look for the name. Sorry. Venom 3 starring Tom Hardy. <laughs> Kelly wrote and produced the first two films. That's my fault. I realized that I didn't put the name of the movie. I'm like, what <laughs> movie is I'm looking at it. I'm like, I'm like, the word Venom was floating around in my head. I'm like, why don't I see it, though? Yeah. <laughs> uh, so Kelly Marcel, he, she wrote the first and second Venom uh, films. Venoms, yeah. And now she will be directing. So Andy Circus is not coming back. No. Kelly's in it. She's like, you know what? I wrote the first one. I wrote the second one. It's my time to write and direct. It's interesting. This this trilogy of movies has had such a weird uh, row to the screen. We had Ruben uh, Ruben Fletcher, Ruben Fletcher mm-hmm. for the first film, mm-hmm. Andy Serkis for the second film, and then now we're having David Lynch for the fourth film. I heard <laughs> we have is what I'm hearing. Kelly Marcel coming in. All the power to her. I we just want a great Venom movie. Yeah, that's all we want. I think we're just gonna get the same thing again. Yeah. Yeah. Well, she wrote the first and second, so I'm guessing. Yeah, we're just we're getting the exact same thing. Hey. Again. Yeah, wh- oh. whether you like it or not, and he probably, uh, well, what's his name, the guy who plays Venom, Tom Hardy. Tom Hardy will probably kind of write in, co-write with. Yeah, because well. he did on the second one. Too, yeah, right? yeah, that's right. Interesting. Avatar: The Way of the Water will be three hours and ten minutes long. Yeah. Woo, yeah. James Cameron does not like this generation of no. people because I just don't see. The gen, this gen of of kids and adults being able to sustain a three hour and ten minute movie without looking at their phones or just up and leaving because their attention is look. Not I'm not going to be drinking any water during this movie because no. clearly there's going to be enough of it on screen. Yeah, I'll be peeing every five minutes then at this point. But you know, it's interesting though. I was talking to my mom the other day. And oh, I was telling nice. I'm like, oh yeah, Wakanda well, Forever is you know it's two hours and forty minutes, and I'm like, oh yeah, it's long. Um, but she's like, oh, she's like, you know what? She's like, I, my, she's like, I like that, especially for going out to the theaters, because like you, again, not that it's quantity getting like your money's worth, but it's like nice going out to see a longer movie, and like because you it feels feel worth like, it, you feel like you're going out worth it, because sometimes you will watch a movie that's ninety minutes in theaters, and it's yeah, the same you're back thing in the you're car, paying, right? Again, and you're back yeah. in the car and home, so yeah. like it's a nice night out. I'm like, oh, that's a nice way to think about it. Mm. No, for sure. I, at the end of the day, I think we've always said it, like, make the movie as long as you want. As long as it as long as warrants it, right? All of it is 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 necessary, and as long as all of it is engaging. Like, there are movies that we watch that are really long, but we don't feel it at all. We're like, oh, wow, this is just 
flying, firing through right now. Yeah. Yeah. So we had, so you know, we had the Batman that was long this year. We have Babylon that's long this year. We have Wakanda Forever, which is almost three hours. Yeah. Now we have Avatar, which is three hours and ten minutes. So it's taking the like taking the first, the cake. The first Bat- Avatar is pretty long as well. Two hours and forty two minutes. Yeah. Uh, extended and, edition, three hours. Right, and like it goes by pretty fast, in, in my opinion. Yeah. Like the first Avatar, like it goes by pretty well. Yeah. yeah. It's engaging. Every every minute of it, luckily, is like is entertaining enough for you to be like, yeah, okay, cool, this is fine. And there are other movies that have done that for us as well. So as long as Way of the Water warrants the three hours and ten minutes, all here for it. Yeah, and I'm just curious. Do you think it'll go by faster because it's high frame rate? I think so. so think it'll be see- only one hour and five minutes. <laughs> we see the movie at double speed. Um, oh, okay. Do you think they'll put an intermission? No. No. Okay. No. No. I, I, but again, they've done it before. That's why. What's the last movie that had an intermission? I wonder. I'll look it up. Hateful Eight. Hateful, Hateful Eight. Eight did have an intermission. Hateful Eight did have an but intermission. But how long was Hateful Eight though? I know it was three hours, but was it over three hours and ten like minutes? Like I can, I can only see an intermission for a four-hour film. Two hours and two hours. Right. Right. Like it doesn't make sense to like, unless it's but not, very. Close but not to all that. versions of Hateful Eight had an intermission though. Only the seven. I think only I thought, the seventy millimeter print had intermission. Okay, but that's yeah. That, that was. But that was like only like one theater that was because I think it was shorter too. Um, I'm I'm like I'm I'm recollecting this now. Like, there was a shorter version of Hateful Eight that was in theaters. I think the seventy millimeter version all... that was longer. I could be misremembering this, but do you remember the shade? Is this ringing a bell to you at all? It is ringing a bell. It's not like the, there's not sound coming out of the bell. Yeah, but it's the ringing bell is the bell. Moving. There yeah, is the also another moving. film that is coming out this year that is also three hours long, and that is Damien Chazelle's Babylon, which will be premiering, I think, in December. So we have. Two movies in December that's going to be about seven hours long uh, between them. If you were to, you know, one week you go watch Avatar, the next week you go watch Babylon. So it's just, it's funny that directors are spending more time in, because the whole idea of when when these executives were, were want, want these movies, they're like, they're too long, they're too long. And here we are, we have four films this year that are over almost close to three hours and... People are enjoying them. It's it's interesting because I'm I'm reading upon uh, you know movies the intermissions and there's a lot of people that I guess are living in different countries and different countries have probably different rules or like standards of how long they want to keep people sitting in a theater or what the audience can withstand. So I'm reading about this one guy who wrote that when he watched Interstellar, he had an intermission because that that's just what it was he's, he's like i found it weird that randomly there's an intermission we all went out came back and then they went up to yeah space or whatever and it's like interesting because we didn't have an intermission for interstellar no no but yeah i just read that the 70 millimeter version of hateful eight is the only one with an intermission makes sense which yeah. is, and i remember but titanic still, still titanic shorter, had one though. as well yeah titanic had one as well but it's so it's so strange that i i would you know i wouldn't mind intermission with avatar i wouldn't mind one either because sometimes you just you need a little break. You well, it all break, depends yeah. on the pacing of the film. So yeah. if it's if it breaks pacing the intermission, then you don't want that. No, you, right. want, you want a natural like, ending point, right? You yeah, don't like want to you restart want restart it. Chitty bang bang going off the cliff, and then you're like, oh, there's an intermission, and then it comes back like, okay, they're okay. That's that's the last chitty chitty bang now, bang has intermission. You guys went to go watch a high frame rate Avatar, right? And how did that feel? We didn't really notice it. I think it. I it felt smooth, and it also smooth, it was four K and HDR. No, and but I mean, like the time span. Like, how did it feel being watching that film again? Did it? Was there any moments where you're like, "Oh, this is boring"? Or no, like no, because James Cameron hasn't directed a film in the past eleven years. Yeah. So I, f- you forget thirteen, years, now, 13 yeah. years. You kind of forget where he's coming from. Yeah. No, so, I didn't. I didn't feel no. like it was slow at all. Like I felt like this is. This is like I, I'm a big fan of Avatar, so like the the pacing felt great because there's always something new happening. Um, and then we got a little clip of the way of water at the end, which was a very random clip. Like it was the most <laughs> remember shade. Like we're like, oh yeah, this is like get a sneak peek at Avatar: The Way of Water, and like we watched it and we're like, that's it, the most random. It had like clip it had like no dialogue in it almost, and it was just like mood, and we're like, was this so out of context? Yeah. What is happening here? And I out of a three hour ten minute film, what a weird point of the movie to show us like yeah, i don't know what it was for you would have thought that would have been like a little action clip or something it was literally just like or just some dialogue it was just like jake going on the beach and they're like their kids were getting in trouble for yeah, something they're like, and you're like what, oh what okay. did you do and i'm like <laughs> what did they do um, but it, like it, in terms of the high frame rate like one of the things that we kind of walked up the reason why i say we didn't really notice it is because it felt really natural like however however james 
did the frame rate like did he keep it consistent did he move it in certain areas it just felt like really smooth all the way through yeah it never it never felt like i was watching high frame rate where it felt like i was in the hobbit when the I was, unexpected journey like you, was way too much yeah i was just like this is very jarring to watch avatar just felt like i'm seeing this movie more clearly but wouldn't your timeline sequence and this is going sorry guys this is getting a little bit ner- nerdy, no that's but good it, that's it would have to for. be like 120 frames when you export it right I, i'm assuming so it couldn't be like he's, oh he's like bouncing this at this he, he figured out like how to manipulate time frame within a sequence to export i just don't yeah and, like, and, and it's like there's some there's some things that natural. look more clear so it's like the action will be a lot more clear than the background is still like 24 it's like it's weird science again james cameron yeah. is a scientific genius when it comes to that stuff but Dude. hateful eight was two hours and 47 minutes that's almost half an hour shorter yeah. than avatar and he, and he only did that because he was like quentin he, wanted that old school feeling the old right? school feeling yeah. of going and getting an intermission but like again it didn't really need it i would love like i and i'm just saying this is i think audience would like having an intermission but i also feel like there's the bad side to it where it's like hey intermission that means people are going to be unsettled. People are going to go leave and come back and then be coming in and breaking that immersion as well, too. Right. Right? Right, right. So I'm curious to see what they end up going with. I feel like if there was going to be intermission, they would have said it already. Yeah, I don't think so. I think James Cam- Cameron wants you sitting in that seat yeah. with those glasses on and being immersed in the next three hours and 10 yeah. minutes. Hold your glasses. Uh, Vision Quest series in the works for Disney Plus. So the Vision is finally getting his. I guess Disney Plus series or yeah. movie, who knows? But it, it's funny that it's coming out now, but not like coming out in like some sort of event of sorts. It's always weird when you see these Marvel things that come out not in an event. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty cool. We kind of will we'll get to know what happened to the White Vision when he left um, Wanda in WandaVision. Yeah, it's worry, crazy how successful WandaVision was as a series that it's now spawned. You know, Doctor Strange, Multiverse of Madness, her the connection there, and two spinoff series. So Vision Quest and the Agatha Harkness series, right? Yes. Crazy. What's the series called? Because it was supposed to be called House of Harkness. They changed it recently. They changed they? it recently to something else. I'm blanking on the name of it. I'll House find of out. Chaos? I'll find out. I'll find out for you. Cool. But you're close. Let's move on to trailer. Trailer. Trailers. Man, we got some great trailers this week. Two of them being Marvel. And the other being not Marvel. <laughs> the first <laughs> one being the other one also not being Marvel. A, the the Guardians of the Galaxy holiday special. We got Ant Man and the Wasp, Quantumania, Santa Clauses, and Succession. Coven of Chaos. Oh, okay, yeah, it's close. Yeah, cool. yeah. <laughs> so, uh, what do you, where do you guys want to start? You want us to talk about Ant Man and Quantumania? Let's, 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 let's with Guardians. Ooh, Top okay. of the list. No, let's, let's, no, let's no, no, it's your show. You host. You, you you do what you want. Okay, let's start with Guardians. Oh, Shay wants. Uh, well, Shay, what do Look you think of Guardians? The Galaxy Holiday Special. Man, that was a fun trailer. Like it just felt like it just felt like joy. I got Christmas spirit out of it. I got love out of it. I felt happy. It, it felt like the opposite of your intro this morning. Um, yeah. Oh, when yeah. I made Ma- when you when you when you made us cry. An observation. Oh, oh, that's, that's even now, worse. Man. Now, that's amazing. worse. But yeah, Shay's right. Like this, this trailer was like so loving. Like it felt like a cheesy Christmas movie. Yeah, and I think that's exactly the vibe James Gunn was going for. So I'm knew. so excited that like again, what a, it's a testament to the MCU again that we could have a Christmas special within this universe, and it feels right. Yeah, you know what I mean. So yeah. like, and and this is perfect. It's coming out November 25th. You'll be able to watch it for the holidays. I hope Marvel has a Christmas themed show or movie or special every year um same with halloween because having werewolf by night this year and now having guardians holiday the holiday special i love have i love having seasonal episodes of things those were always my favorite episodes of like sitcoms growing up Mm -hmm. oh it's a halloween episode oh it's a christmas episode absolutely so to have that like last year we had hawkeye this year we're gonna have guardians so like i just hope that because they always br- those, those those episodes those special episodes always break the mold yeah and that's what's so great about them so you know now that marvel studios has this special presentation banner to run under i think the possibilities are endless they really are you're right it reminds me of those one shots that you would get um in the comics where they would do you know the yearly uh what do they call it the 
I forgot what the name of the comic. It's a specific name they give comics. Oh, like the specials they do? Yeah, but it's yeah. a one-year comic. Or a, a the annuals? Year, the annuals. Yeah, the annuals, yeah. And usually it would fall around something theme-based, too. So I do like this idea of Christmas and Halloween, and maybe they'll do Easter. Or <laughs> they'll do an Easter they'll have Jesus in one of the episodes. They'll have <laughs> he's a, he's, every he's religious... He's a superhero. Kang has to kill Jesus. Why is Kang killing Jesus? Every religious uh, You're back at holiday. the wrong time, Jesus. will be a Jewish Marvel cinematic <laughs> yeah, 100%. event. They'll have a, a Muslim cinematic event. Yeah. Just yeah. Be... Well, that's just that MCU, then. Oh, yeah, they can't do that. <laughs> what would you say? Muslim Cinematic Universe? <laughs> <laughs> can't do that. It's already it's already been done, buddy. You no, know, we had we had a, a very <laughs> brief Eid all, scene yes. in um in Miss Marvel this we year. We did. I mean, yeah. we got we got some Eid. Shout out to my Eid celebrators or, or my Muslims out there, you know? Yeah. But wouldn't it be like specific to Miss Marvel and Eid and they have like this amazing she has to just fast for like 30 days. <laughs> it's, like, it's the whole series. <laughs> the whole series. And just oh, every day she's like, oh, I gotta happen. eat. Yeah. Jay's fasting is coming around the corner. Yeah. It's, you want me to fast the, again? No, I don't. Oh. I just, now it's kind of, it's almost a full year. Now we're gonna almost hit, a full year. Gonna You're going to see me fasting. fasting soon, buddy. Yeah. Fasting life. No, no fasting for Shay this year. Wait, why? No, I'm going to do it. <laughs> you're, uh, just putting, you're just putting false information out yeah, there. Yeah. Don't, don't, don't put it out there. Kevin Bacon. Bacon. Kevin Play Bacon. Kevin Bacon in this movie. Or, yeah, this movie is special. How do you guys feel about that? Great. Kevin Bacon playing Kevin Bacon? I'm here they for it. could have cast anyone better. Yeah. He, I'm here for it. He, he's the only one that can do that role. Yeah. It's funny. Like, he he's... Uh, like, again, it's it's a payoff to a joke that was set up in, like, the, the Guardians films. Like, I think the first one and the second one, they mentioned Kevin Bacon. Um, it's, it's such a great payoff of a joke was it in that in infinity war I infinity think? war too yeah like, like kevin bacon like yeah uh, mantis says yeah um but it's like uh it's such a great payoff to the joke like oh he's actually hopefully going to meet kevin and it's kevin bacon, it's kevin bacon yeah. and it's actually kevin bacon now yeah. we, now kevin bacon can never be in the mcu oh uh, well he is though but that's as, the thing as like a as playing a character in the mcu but I, it's, it's I, I don't think it'll stop anyone no no, no. they could yeah. do something they can do it. something but it's just it's just great to see him in this capacity in the MCU because it's just, it's, it looks great and we have Cosmo in this we have Rocket in played this played by Maria Bakalova yeah and what's also interesting too is that Groot looks very Groot actually looks like Vin Diesel Yo, in Groot this. looks like he's jacked yeah, bro he looks like Vin Diesel in this yeah, yeah. He let's say they're like let's put Vin Diesel's face and make it out of wood yeah <laughs> <laughs> damn yeah isn't it like, already made out of wood Vin Wait, Diesel's Vin face, Diesel's yeah. face? Looks like he has a wood face. Yeah, wood, wood, wood face McGee. Wood face, no, wood face Diesel. <laughs> <laughs> Ant Man and the Wasp Quantumania. Let's talk about this trailer. This was a really good trailer. Banger trailer. Yeah, great, great trailer. use of music, mm -hmm. great use of visuals. We got Kang. It, it seems like the, the, this world that we're going to get into, this Quantumanium world. What are the, the, uh, Quantum Realm? Quantum, Quantum Realm. Realm. We're going to be kind of living in there for for that film and learning what happens, which is cool because, you know, when you look at the galaxy and how small we really are and then going into a microscopic version of what that is beyond us, that's pretty cool to see because Ant-Man is a small guy, right? Like he, he, he sees things in a different perspective, but now we're going like microscopic, micro, quantum. We're going quantum. And when we go down that route, we get to see other things yeah. like multiverse stuff we so get to see kang who yeah. is going to be we'll say the villain of this phase of phase five of phase five so ant-man is the first film of phase five correct yes yeah yes. so right. that comes out in february yep uh, i think it's a great spot for this movie to be coming out it's a great trailer uh we don't have too long of a wait i like that marvel's been really spacing out their trailers now because mm -hmm. again there's so much movies and shows coming out that we don't need a year lead time like i remember back yeah. when the every avengers film was coming out i'd wait till the first week of october you get that first trailer for a movie coming out only in may and now it's like four months they know that's all you they need. know now like what their lead time is or three for, months really for like for running months. things like they know that okay we can even start marketing this movie a week before and we're still gonna kill it and we'll be okay mm -hmm. but yeah, yeah jonathan majors i think is going to be the, the standout for this absolutely and to know that he's going to be that villain that the avengers are uniting for in 2025 can't wait can't wait yeah. can't wait yeah it looks fun can't really wait fun. can't wait i like it did you guys see the santa clauses yeah looks I, fun. I haven't seen it but um maybe yeah. Nail, you could talk about it looks cute uh it looks cute it's great to see tim allen coming back in this role 
Um, I'm a huge fan of the first movie. It's probably one of my most watched Christmas movies of all time. Same here. Um, even the second and third one, as cheesy, they get a lot cheesier. The second and third one, I remember seeing both of them in theaters. Same. Um, you know, with the second one being with like a toy version of Tim Allen. It's scary. It's so scary. Looking. It's so creepy. Like looking. The, the creepiest thing, like the like plasticky looking. Yeah, but it's so. It's also really but, funny though. But it's also very two thousands as well. It's very two thousands and written by a friend of the show, Cinco Paul. That's true. Um, I just remember like I always die of laughter when like because he has to find a wife in that one. Yes, and it's just really funny. And then the third one, Martin Short is the villain. Yeah. It. Um, it's interesting that this is a series. Shay, you and I were talking about that. Yeah. Them going for a series approach rather than just being a movie. Right. And I, I think I think what what not bothered me or anything like that, but like what I wanted is like just another Santa Claus movie because like you said, when it comes to holiday specials and things like that, they're just kind of like a one and done kind of thing. Right. Like you have it, you absorb it, and then you kind of move on from it. When you make it a series, to, to tune in every week for something that's so... Specific? specific yeah is kind of hard i feel like like i have to always be constantly in the mood for it right so i'm, I'm like, curious to see where they're going to go with I'm, i don't know when the release date is but if it were it november was 15th november 15th to yeah. december whenever yeah. right. well, december it makes, whenever <laughs> it makes sense it, i think the 25th i could be wrong is that christmas day christmas day i'm just kidding I'm just, <laughs> like, that would be cool like, I, that would be very disney to release it i'm not too sure i don't think it would be I'm like that that popular to actually have that release time yeah like, I'm sure but, it'll get everybody in the Christmas mood every week. Yeah, right. And also, a lot of those series or movies you just put on in the background yes. as you do Christmassy things or holiday things makes sense. Yeah, it, it seems like they they want to give Santa Claus his due. They want to give him the that serious series that he's been looking for for the past. It's about time. I'm done with the movies. I it's want the series of my life. <laughs> so it, it, looks like, it looks like it's going to be six episodes. The first two episodes are going to be premiering on November 16th. Sorry, let me correct myself there. Um, and then followed by the 23rd, the 30th, the 7th, and then the 14th of December will be the last episode. Amazing. Yeah. So looking forward to that. Hopefully it will be fun. And we also got a trailer for Succession, which is more of a teaser and kind of ta- talks about where the family is at after what happened in the, la- in the last season and how... The father has now kind of disowned his kids. And Did you like the last season? I can't oh remember. yeah, fantastic, amazing, amazing, amazing. It was. It started off with that cliffhanger from the previous season, and then left 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 off with another cliffhanger. Damn. Right. And I don't want to spoil too much, but if you haven't watched Succession, you need to go watch it. You need to like really read into it, and hopefully, we'll have a review for it whenever it comes out in 2023. I was going to say, do you know when the new season's coming out? Sometime in 2023. That's all okay. they they said, but. Probably I could see it probably March, March, April, March, 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 March April. I would say March ish, but it's, it's a it's but it's a weird thing to say. March it, it's March it, March it, March it, March ish, March ish. It sounds like not a, a different language. Like, is it Portuguese? You Ma- speaking? March ish. Yeah, yeah. I thought it, it, was, does, it does sound like. I it. thought it was Boston. Ma- I, uh, it was March, both. March, 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 March. So yeah, like it, I'm always a, I'm always looking forward to HBO series. I have now gone into White Lotus, and I think White Lotus has started yesterday. Yes, the twenty ninth. Yeah, sun, so today's Monday. It'd be Sunday. Yeah. Um, so I'm I'm always looking forward to serious HBO series. Listen, if you want to watch a great serious HBO series, I have the one for you. It's called Andor, and it, it's on Disney Plus. <laughs> it's I so know. Good. I have to watch it. I have to watch. Oh it. Oh my god! I, I have to watch it too. I, I I think here's my thing with Andor. I absolutely love it, but I feel like I'm gonna wait till it's done because I, yeah. then I can easily. Because the show is is a bit slower, but it's so amazing that waiting every week for it, it it kind of makes me go oh, at the end of every episode. So if I can binge it, I think I'd feel better. One thing I, I get that too. I one get thing that. I want from all streaming service is one continuous cut of a series. Oh, that's a lot, man. Wait, wait, that's what do you mean? What do you like, mean? No breaks. Like you know, like you start the series. You and don't it want just, intermission. And no intermission. What is God of War? Single camera. Be, my intermission would be would be me uh, but pausing it, uh, it but it will play the next episode though right yeah, but away. then i gotta wait for it i have to hit the button to skip but I it's like 10 seconds re- reca- <laughs> but i don't want to hit the button i want it to be like i'm watching this for Damn. S- seven hours however long and okay. i'll just continue where i just want that option okay can they not make that option it's so easy just continuous play non-stop. continuous play okay i'm gonna throw it to shay for some box office thank you so much Cha-ching! for that 
the cha-ching. Oh, wow, you did it. Uh, yeah, because when I host, I do the cha-ching. I did the echo. When you guys host, you guys do the that's cha-ching. That's right. I, I, yeah, that's, that's why I didn't do it. continuity in that's case, why I didn't you know, do it. like, our audience is like, oh, that was the day Anthony did not cha-ching. Yeah. <laughs> Anthony like, didn't oh, cha-ching see, today. There's a mistake there. Dear Slim, I wrote you. All right, so <laughs> then we got here Black Adam in its second week, which is kind of weird because Daniel, you and I were talking about this as well. It feels like it's been out for a while. It feels like Black Adam came out at the beginning of October. Yeah. It's because the marketing started in fucking half of September. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Half, half of September? Well, like Damn, September. that's a... It's a unique way of saying the middle of September, by the way. <laughs> I've never heard of it that way. Half of September. <laughs> half of September. Oh, okay. Well, it's the first part of September. And it's You're, not wrong. And You're then, not wrong. You're not wrong. I just, am, yes, I've never wrong. heard it described I that way. I just talk and in riddles. I, I know. Yeah. And I love it. I would want it on a shirt. <laughs> Gandalf over here. Yeah. Half of October. I would want it on a shirt, you know? Um, sorry. Yeah. So Black Adam, it, it came in first place, obviously, with 27.7 million. Right now, we're sitting at about 111 domestic. Uh, Ticket to Paradise in its second place this week um, with 10 million, and you're looking at about 33.7 million domestic. Obviously, worldwide a lot more, so I think it's going to make back its 104 billion dollar budget. I believe that it was for this movie. <laughs> uh, Pray for the Devil, you know, third place with seven million. That's that's it's got some legs, which is good. You know, dude, it'll I, probably do I'm well just for saying, our next interview weekend. for that fucking push that movie up to seven million. It probably did. Okay, even more. We were responsible okay. for six of the seven. I yeah. Think. You're welcome, guys. Yeah, you know. anytime, Lionsgate. <laughs> um, and then Smile, which, you know, in fourth place, five million so far. Uh, Halloween ends with 3.8 million in fifth place. So uh, that's like three horror movies right there in the top five, which is pretty solid, which is a great, great sign for October. Because all these movies are also made on a shoestring budget when you talk about the horror movies. So that can only mean that the next year and the year after that, we go back to getting seasonal-based films for the month that they come out. Because it's been a while that we haven't been really been getting Halloween-esque films in the month of Halloween. You know, we had, with the exception of, like, last... Again, the last two Octobers have been really write-offs, right? Right. Um, but, man, like... You really need to realize when you're releasing a film, and again, I'm not a I'm not a studio head, not yet, but like, <laughs> look how well the Halloween movies do, regardless of their quality, regardless of what the critics give it. When you're releasing a movie in the month that it's surrounding, it helps out a lot. And I think about Bros, a movie that Shay, you and I really love this year, releasing basically October first. Yeah. The worst possible time to release it. And Universal is dealing with that now. It's a huge box office bomb for them, which sucks. It was only that movie was only scary for homophobes. That's it. You know, that's exactly yeah. right. <laughs> and it's like that movie is such a great film. It's such a funny movie. And it was just like you released it for the for the um, film festivals, which is great, but it just released at such a wrong time of the year. And I just wish that that is such a summer movie. And you knew and you know you told us which month would, would work best for it. You know, like if it was like if we release this in June, like release this around Pride Month. Like release this as a celebration for when people could go out and celebrate it and be happy for this. The like, marketing I, alone would have been just it would have been it would have been great. And I, and I was just thinking I'm like it's it's interesting that they didn't release it any time in the summer or especially around Pride Month, I think this movie would have done a lot better because people would want would have gone out to support. And again, I don't yes, know about that. I, again, I don't know. I don't I, know 100 percent either. But think... I just think that the fact that this movie, the marketing, I think for this movie was was not great. Yeah. But, but it also was in a category where it's like you need to release it. We're at least going to have a better shot to survive. Right. Because people aren't going to go see um, a rom com. I think in October. Yeah, right. Ticket to Paradise is there, but you also have... Julia George, Roberts you and have, George Clooney. You have Julia Roberts and George Clooney. This is Billy Eichner's first big film. I think right? it's Billy Eichner that's caused bros to not succeed. You think, I think so? I think a lot of people don't like him. It's possible too, right? I think people find him annoying, and I think that's why I didn't go watch it. I, yeah. think, I think he did alienate a lot of people with you know a lot of the the messaging that he was trying to get across in the film. But not, not just that. I think like beforehand, I think he can, comes off as an annoying... Like, like, his whole, like, like Billy on the street, type Billy thing, on the right? street. Like I think people just didn't gravitate to him. It's yeah. it's definitely it's possible funny for sure. But yeah. like I just don't see him leading, and, like being this again. This is his vehicle. Yeah, it's an ex- more of an expensive movie too. But again, I just wish that it had a better marketing campaign. And I think the better marketing campaign could have come from it being released in a better time of the and year. And they needed like a George Clooney or a Julia Roberts to be in that film to get people to come to it. They didn't have a star to really get people to like be interested in it yeah star power goes a long you, way and again you need that. i think but when you also think of 
uh, I'm trying to think. Train wreck. Train wreck was very similar to that. Yeah, but Amy Schumer was, I think, a more known comedian. Was she? I feel like, and you still had Bill Hader, and you also had LeBron James, right, right all right. over that movie, right. right? So, but I'm just thinking, very similar type of story, story, a love story, right? They meet, you know, trying to figure out the lives together, yeah. But it's Amy Schumer, who I didn't know much about until Train, and that fucking skyrocketed. That was a huge movie, but it yeah. came out during a different time. But also, it had LeBron James. It had like a lot of other people that brought people to the theater. Right. If, if you guys are curious about the global numbers, Black Adam is at two hundred and fifty globally. Um, Ticket to Paradise is at a hundred million globally. So, I mean, at least Ticket to Paradise, Ticket to Paradise now has made back its budget and then some. Yeah. Right. Uh, maybe marketing costs, hopefully too. Um, there's that movie that you spoke about. Last week as well, Anthony. Ter- Terrifier 2. Yeah. Terrifier 2. Uh, yeah, it's actually doing pretty strong. I mean, for 250K budget, it's at 7.7 million right That's now. That's huge. That's massive. Yeah. Huge. That's yeah. like a crazy return. Which is which movie. is insane. So yeah. they're clearly going to... That, that indie horror market is big. It's getting bigger every year, I think. Um, and they're going to capitalize on that next year. I wouldn't be surprised. And, and here's another thing, too. Another, I believe it was another Universal movie. The Northman is another film that I think released oh, at the wrong yeah, time. Oh, yeah, bad time. Year, right? mm-hmm. Didn't do great. It had a bigger budget from what but Robert also needed, It needed a bigger star cast. Right. And But, I mean, you have Nicole Kidman in it. You yeah, know? that's not you enough. You have Willem Dafoe in it. Not enough. I, Ethan Hawke. Yeah, yeah, Ethan But Hawk the thing is, the way they were marketed is you could tell that they're not big enough in this film. Right, but I also think, again, if that movie was released in a, hopefully in a better time, yes. you would have had a better turnout for it. You, you released hope. They released a Northman in April. Yeah. Like, why? Yeah. It could just be people just don't care for Vikings, you know? It's true. Or, but North they, dude, it's so is it's, like, it's, it's such a weird world we live in. Like, you'll have the show Vikings, which people will talk about, and they love, and all this blah, 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 blah. But when it comes to, like, the movie, people won't watch it, because... Not every there's so many because you different have to go out and pay people for it, right? out there, right? That will have to yes go out and pay for it, but they just they have their niches, and sometimes it hits, and sometimes it misses. It's true. You're so it's right. So weird. You're very right. I don't think like, I don't even know how to explain it. If if you're curious though, the, for the Northman, it 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 only made about sixty nine million worldwide on like an eighty million budget, right? Uh, I can't see the budget right now, but I'll definitely find out for you. I'm yeah. sure that the budget was high. For I it. think the budget was like 80 million. Yeah. Like it was like it was like a. It oh, was so a, that's not great at all. It was a really expensive movie, and like Robert Eggers, um, is used to doing with like I think like 10 to 20 million dollar budgets, right? So, mm-hmm. so yeah, it was about roughly about 70 to to 90 million to produce. Yeah. So, and then you factor in marketing, you factor everything else on that. So it was a very expensive, uh, very expensive. Again, I love The Northman, but it was also like, again. I'd rather watch a Northman now. That's why I was on my Halloween list than in April. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. It's just, just how it goes sometimes. How it goes sometimes. How it goes. What are we watching? We're going to start off with me because I have the shortest list. We all have the shortest list. No, I, I, I have, the <laughs> I have two list. things on my list. We I all have the, have the same two things I'm going to start off list. with, it's my show. Sure. <laughs> Go for it. I, wa- I watched uh, Black Panther, Wakanda Forever. Oh, so yours is the longest, technically. And uh, I watched American Gigolo, which uh-huh. is an awful show. Don't watch it. The ending was awful. And I, it's I think the John Berthal one, right? It's the John Berthal. I, I just don't see it coming back for a second season. Uh-huh. What's, what's uh, Show, network was on? Showtime. 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 And I played a lot of God of War Ragnarok, which apparently I haven't played a lot of because Daniel's like, no, you, there's so much more left. But... Yeah, I've been doing that. I'm so excited to talk about that game because I've also been playing God of War Ragnarok, as has Shabazz. Mm. Um, There's a good half my list right there. That, that was, <laughs> That's half my list gone right I there. T- I took it. Um, <laughs> it's Yeah, so it's on... Uh, not saying any more. I did roll credits on it. Won't say anything else on it. But yeah, look forward to our review later this week. Um, then we're going to be talking some spoilers on it the week afterwards. I have a lot to talk about on that one. I'm so excited for us to dive in. Um, Wakanda Forever, also what I've been watching this week. Um, the one time I watched it this week. Yeah, I was going to say, Mike, um, did you watch it more than us? Loved it. Can't wait to talk about it again. Look forward to a review next week. Yeah. Uh, for me, uh, Wakanda Forever and God of War Ragnarok. That's it, man. That's been my, like, that's been my so, week. So I'm letting, letting the audience know they're lying. They've watched more and they just don't want to see it. No, I'm being generally, well, actually, I lied. I have been watching more, but some things are under embargo. Yeah, I think yeah these guys are embargoes. They're embargoes. I was, they're embargoes I started stuff. watching a documentary on Netflix I didn't see any embargo information on it. Is it, it the Pepsi? A hundred percent is the Pepsi. Oh, is it? I want to watch that yeah, one. Did you, did you start I it? I saw the trailer for Is that. it good? Can you tell us? Break the embargo right now. No, it's. I don't think there's an embargo on it. Okay. But I was... I'm, I'm, I have like 10 minutes left of the first episode. It's like a four episode docuseries. Okay. 
it's really cool and especially if you to watch love, it next year when you, i have time if you love like 90s commercials I and do. marketing which we all do yeah the show does a really good job of i'm it. really excited about that one it yeah. looks really good yeah i had no idea what it, i'd never heard of it until i saw it on netflix and i was just like oh it was like pepsi buy me a jet or something like yeah, that. yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. i don't it's, know it's can great. i talk about what i was watching uh, i don't know what, what are you watching you seem secretive no i i think i, I didn't see what you said i i you know what i'm not gonna say it okay I, to be safe can you, t- but, can you text me what but this watching? but this week we're doing something about it though we're doing some interviews for it this week. Uh oh, on no, Tuesday. we can't talk about nah, it. So I can't <laughs> talk about it. I don't. <laughs> don't so even. Sorry. Don't even we're look so at me sorry. right now. Yeah, no, we're no. we're those assholes right now. They're yeah. like, yeah, we've already seen. Uh, I don't even know what these guys are talking yeah. about right now because you don't watch it. That's the problem. I'm not even part of this show. No, <laughs> no you. You're a ghost, bro. I'm just. I'm just confirming, Shay. But I don't. I don't think I can. I don't think I can even look at it. Yeah. No, we can't even look at it. You haven't watched any Love Is Blind. Um, well, I mean, okay, in, in all fairness, I've finished it, but Ooh, I can't talk that, about the, Jay the, knows I, all I the know, secrets. I know all the secrets, but I can't talk about Look it. Look for Shay's TikTok because he's going to reveal I'm drop, it. I'm dropping it on there. Yeah. No, uh, this is, I think right now we're on the second week of Love is Blind and I still don't like anybody yet, but this, it's such an interesting season because, um, the ones that I do like, I don't think they're going to last. And the ones I don't like, I'm sure are going to last. So I'm really curious to see where it goes, even though I know. Interesting. Yeah, we can't talk about it. Okay, then I won't talk about it. <laughs> we I will reveal, though, down in we a We will episode, reveal down the road. What we were talking about, though. But, but we can't, honestly, uh, we can't talk honestly about though, I, I, I've been mostly playing God of War. Like yeah. that, that is me sneaking yeah. in like 30 to 40 minutes here and there when I'm eating or something so that yeah. my hands don't soil a computer or yeah. a controller, sorry. I literally, I went so hard on God of War for like four days straight. Um, that His I family felt, didn't even see him. That I felt like, I, no, they didn't. I felt like I was like, when I, when I was done playing, it felt like I wasn't even me anymore. I felt was like it I was like when Homer house. left the, the couch, it just left an imprint of his body? Yeah. Remember that exactly scene that. in The Simpsons? Yeah. So. yeah. There were visible stink lines going around Daniel. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It was just like he became the he became the man. I, of I became the, the stank. Yeah. So, yeah. so <laughs> me personally, I knew that there was a deadline for this for this review to come out. So I'm like, yeah. I'm not gonna put all my effort into play. I'm gonna imp- like enjoy, enjoy playing it. this game. Um, that's why I haven't finished. But it. now you enjoyed it too much. But see, the, you... the thing the thing with this is, I'm I was I'm right there with you, Anthony. Where now I'm like, like oh, I, I want to watch because this review is coming up soon. I'm like, I, I really play. am enjoying my time with it, and I wanna I wanna savor it. But the game is so good that I can't stop playing. That yeah. was my problem. That's the problem. Yeah. I was playing like I get why Daniel did it. Yeah, I like was not sleeping. I was just playing it. You know, we we had like ads like uh, Adderall. Like, no, sorry, we're no, we no no we uh, had like, episodes that were supposed to come out, emails that I was supposed to return. Like they were just not return. Not yeah, no, they were good. Uh, yeah, but it's a it's a it's a phenomenal game that I'm very excited to talk about. Yeah. What else are we talking about this week? That's it. Are we talking about Rings of Power? I guess we can a little bit, yeah. yeah let's, let's talk about Rings of Power. I know we're a little late on it, but we wanted people to kind of watch it, right? Yeah. Get caught up, experience the experience of the experience. Triple experience. Triple X. The movie Vin by Diesel. Vin Diesel. <laughs> would, would, would face Diesel. Um, what an amazing show. I honestly, I, I love the show. I thought um, eight episodes, I wish it was longer. Yep. I think it could have really benefited from being 10 episodes because um, I think we really rushed the... Um, Are we going spoilers? Sorry, by the way. Yeah, we're, we're going spoilers. We're going spoilers, we're going spoilers right? Spoilers. Yeah, yeah. Cool. I think we really rushed the 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 Durin, uh, the Durin, Durin. and the... Um, Elrond? Uh, the Elrond storyline and Celebrim, and Celebrimbor as well, too, who was just like, oh, this is just... We're making rings now. Like, it was just like, it was very fast. Yeah. Um, but I think everything with the Southlands and Mordor being revealed and Sauron being revealed, and then we're pretty sure we know that the stranger is now Gandalf because he dropped some Gandalf like quotes on us with an always follow your nose. Yeah. Um, I love that. Yeah. But I'm really, but again, I know this is just the introduction to a five season story. So it very much is the opening, but I'm like, what an ending, what a production value. I can't wait to see where it goes. But man, there's still a lot that I wish that we got oh my God. spoken about and we will hopefully have addressed soon. It's crazy that the first person we met when we were in LA was Sauron, technically. We did, yeah. We yeah. saw him. We saw him. Technically, uh, didn't know who he was at the no. time. He came out of the he elevator and I'm like, this guy Sauron. looks familiar. Yeah. Sauron looking dude. Yes. Yeah, uh, yeah, I just, just got, got a Sauron, up, Sauron vibe from him. Us, like, <gasps> I, I, I agree with what you're saying that I think one or two more episodes really would have helped kind yeah, of. Because yeah. it's considering that the first 
four episodes are a lot slower. Yeah. And then it kind of picks up with episode five, six. Episode six. Six is, is phenomenal. Like just the best of the year in yeah. terms of TV. You could have done one or two more just to kind of like even it out, like give it give it some more time to yeah. breathe. Legally, they can't though. Legally. Sadly. You could they actually have, actually yeah eight episodes was the legal limit is the legal limit for each but season. each episode could be as long as they want to be right but also but they you, also want to be yeah yeah so that's the thing where like episode six is like a movie almost. wow that's interesting I didn't yeah know so that. that was that was like a, a something that Tolkien did I think in the six, 60s or 70s that they're like you could adapt for a TV show no longer than eight episodes and that again it's very strange what the rights are for this because we know the rights for Middle Earth just got purchased. Um, recently Middle Earth is being occupied right now you know Middle Earth is being occupied right now wow but it's like you could do eight episodes but you can't add, you can't talk about certain things in certain books it's really dumb how it all works it's very it's, yeah it's very weird but I mean at the end of the day as someone who doesn't watch Game of Thrones or House of Dragons I now finally have a series for myself that takes place mythically that I can enjoy right right because I don't have anything like that and it's not you know I have nothing against those shows I appreciate them I think they're fantastic because people love watching them they do great I've tried I couldn't get into them but I think because of my attachment to the Peter Jackson Lord of the Rings movies I was able to find myself in this show and just get completely lost in it. You find right. relations, relate like relatable things to yeah. the shows, but it's not, it's not Lord of the Rings. Yeah, right. And and the budget is obviously one of the most expensive shows ever made. You can see it. Each yeah. episode is like a feature film. Yeah, it's beautiful. Especially like when we saw it for the first time, I think it blew me away with the visuals. I'm like, man, this is this is stuff that you see in films you don't yeah. see in TV. This has gone beyond, and it's such a, it's so interesting because we're getting something so grand on such a small scale, watching it on our screens. Yeah. But one day our screens will be like 180 inches, and they'll be... We'll be watching it in, just, uh, in VR. Your wall probably. will just be your display yeah. in the future. Oh, that'd be cool. Um, that'd be very cool. But yeah, I, Daniel, you're right. Like the ending with Durin and not getting closure... And not even even seeing him pretty much at yeah. the last episode. You don't see any of the Southland characters really, other yeah. than like no Brown, no uh, Brock Bronwyn. Arind- you don't see um, Arendelle. Arendelle, like you don't you don't see them because like they're kind of story wrapped up this season, like, right? Uh, Ellen Deal, we don't see we don't see really. I, I can't believe we're getting a cliffhanger with the Seal Door. Like that's so interesting. Yeah, like Sildor just vanished. Oh yeah, yeah. Like we don't know. Obviously, we know what's happening yeah. because we will see him later. But it's so interesting that they ended it like that. I was like, oh, um, we haven't. We're not going back to Sildor yet. Yeah, oh, okay. which which I'm kind of cool with as well. Very cool with yeah. Because because I feel I also feel like it was bold. It was bold, and I wonder if like who's like now that we know that who Sauron is and how Hal, Halbrand is there. It's like, do you think he's going to see Sildor on his way to Mount Doom? Like in the second season, I could see that happening, and it's like, oh shit, he's the one who's like, Isildur is going to kill Sauron in this, right? Yeah. Or Sauron and, using and, his fat as sword. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's like I could see them have some type of connection, connection there. Yeah, like I could totally see. Oh my god, like could you imagine? Pass a little bit, like <gasps> foreshadow. Yeah. That's so cool, right? That'd be cool. But like, yeah, I'm just, I'm just so excited to go back to this world. I love the Harfoots in this world. Yeah, that that final scene with Nori and. Oh. Uh, our our friend of the show, Dylan Smith, Largo Brandyfoot, just giving that that LB. speech. My God, I was just like, and I was just, just their their like like gang sign yeah. like high five thing it was so cool. Secret handshake, yeah, yeah. It was so it was cute. just so touching. It, it was great, great characters all around. We're we're with Galadriel being, we'll say the main star of this season. Do you think she takes place? She's still the main star of the second season. Is she like the more <sighs> predominant character that we kind of revolve around? Because a lot of people didn't like the tone she was given because she felt like very brooding. She was always on a war path and she never portrayed what I guess Galadriel would have been in the actual books. She just But it was also two thousand years earlier, right? She came too hard. Right. And I think they wrote her too hard. Do you find that they'll taper her down a bit? We'll, we'll get more of a uh mild tempered Galadriel now that she knows who Sauron is and how she was manipulated and all that, or is she or is she still on that war path? I think she's still on the war path because she knows now that she is instrumental in creating Mordor, yeah. right? So I think that we're gonna see that. And that you know, and I like seeing a different portrayal of Galadriel because we're so used to her being like this like floaty this floaty just like hello all things that will pass will pass. <laughs> you know, like very just like mythic and very just stoic. Um, so it's nice to see a different side of her, but I definitely think next season, 
now that I don't think we're going to have the Harfoots, like we're not going to be keep cutting back to them the whole time. I think the Harfoot story going forward now is going to be Nori and Gandalf. And then we're going to have the mainline story going to be the rings. Like, I don't think we're going to have as much of a divide between all the stories. I, I think we're going to have maybe three or four past rather than being like the five or six that they were going curious. Before, I mean, right? I mean, they, they totally could. Right. I mean, at the end of the day, the impression that, Gandalf or the stranger has left with the um with the Harfoots could play into effect down the road. We don't right. know. I, I I also agree with what you're saying that there may be that possibility that we just focus on less not like like lesser stories just to kind of go from there. Um, but yeah, I'm I what I'm what I'm really curious about is what you just said in terms of is this going to be a Galadriel focused second season? I think so. I think if anything, they'll double down on her vengeance because now she just like Daniel said. She feels responsible, and she she knows that she was a direct accomplice to this. So, if anything, she's going like she's double fisting to swords now. I just want to see her more with Elrond because we only really got like two scenes with them this season, right? I just want more. I just want more Elrond. More is that Elrond. is that too much to ask? Amazon no. Prime, no <laughs> Prime Video. If, if you're listening, which we know you are, yeah, uh, more Elrond, please, because my God, Robert Mayo, yeah. Phenomenal. He's, he's so just, good in the He's role. just so good. He does that smirk. That he, smirk is the so... The smirk, so, he's so talking, and I'm like, dude, whatever you're saying, I'm on board. Yeah, and give us more Durin as well, Durin. too. Because they're so good together. Like, we know what's going on in the mines now. The mines. The mines. Uh, so I'm just... I want to see more what's happening in this world, and I want to keep these characters together. You spent a season with them apart. Let's start seeing... You know, Durin and Galadriel and um, Kellen Brimbor and Elrond together, now working together or fighting each other. I right? would say Kellen Brimbor being now, like, we don't we don't need him as much anymore because the rings have been, uh, actually, well, only three. He makes more he, rings, He makes right? more rings. Yeah. yeah. But I would think, you know, King Galad, we, we didn't really see much right. being predominantly, you know, shown in the second season. So we can kind of see. Or the first, se- oh, first season. Well, I mean, see see him more in the second. Oh, okay, season, see him more. King, in... king Galad. Yeah, yeah, because he's he's the king of the elves, also, right? Like, uh, yeah. What about um, Numenor? Isil, yeah, Isildur's sister. Was there something happening there? I I can't. There was a there. She was in front of a palantir. Yeah, right. right. Is, she, is she gonna take one? Like, it, I think it all because their characters new as well. I, a picture season two. Uh, Isildur will bring back Sauron to. Numenor, and that's how brother. Uh, what's his name? The the big beard guy from Numenor. Uh, oh, yes. yeah. I forget. I forget his name. It was an intense name. Phase on. Phase on. I was like, like, then manipulate because Fazuli. <laughs> Fazuli. I was like Alice Fazuli's. Uh, King Muriel, a uh, Queen Muriel, King Muriel, Queen Muriel will go back, and Queen I don't Regent th- Muriel, yeah, Queen Regent Muriel yeah. will go back, but she is vision, like she's blind at this point. Yeah, do you think she'll get her vision back? No, yeah, I don't think but so I think that will cause the downfall. Like, how can she run a yeah, kingdom cause, cause, uh, without seeing it? Uh, so Phazon will come Phazon, in. Yeah, I was gonna say plasma. And <laughs> Sau- Sauron will manipulate Phazon, which will bring the the, the downfall of and Numenor, the, the flooding of Numenor, right? and then it would lead to the end of. That, I think that's where second season ends. Do you think second season ends with the flooding of Numenor? I bl- I, I think so. I don't know if they it's can a fit good, all it's that a good in. Point. Eight, it's a great point to do it eight in. Eight episodes? Yeah. I, think, I think we'll see the flooding of Numenor maybe in the third season. Third that's season is also... Like second and third is where I'm like, it could happen. But the yeah. third, definitely. Fifth season has to be a war between... Oh, yeah. All, 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 all I, the I honestly think the fifth season is going to end... With the fight that we see at the beginning of the Fellowship of the Ring, yeah, yeah absolutely. But there has to be a time jump between the fourth and fifth season. Probably, yeah. There like might be even in the jump. first and second. Who knows? Yeah, like there, there, you could see it, right? Like I don't how how much longer do you think we'll see like the Harfoots and Nori and things like that? And we may see a, a we definitely may see a time jump, right? Especially with characters like elves and dwarves who live longer. Yeah, we'll we'll probably see that, right? Yeah, I could see it. But yeah, what a season of, of what television, What a season. Right? Uh, I give it a watch it. Yeah, I say I give it a watch it too. A watch it yeah. as well. I would say it's cinematic excellence that redefines what's possible on television. That's a quote from the movie podcast that was used in marketing for the show. That's true. That's pretty cool. Cha-ching. Yeah. We didn't get money for that. No. No. We didn't get money for that. <laughs> no, but a lot of people, people on the internet assumed. thought we did, yeah, though. Uh, yeah, Amazon, thank you for the Couple money. Couple of shills. Yeah. <laughs> Daniel, can you move your money bags out of the way? Yeah, They're sorry. I just... like sitting on them. I like putting my like feet du- up on it's them. It's like DuckTales. Is it DuckTales? Yeah, DuckTales, yeah. 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 Scrooge McDuck, and then yeah. they, they're in the, the, 
the fucking vault of money and yeah. just living. That's what our studio now yeah. looks like. Yeah, I, it is. I, I thought wish. you guys would like it. I, I do. Thank thank you to Amazon for sending us all this money. <laughs> they for send us coins. Coins. Big yeah. dollar coins. Yeah, yeah, I mean, Bezos, great, Bezos on the front. Bezos on the front. Yeah, they have a great shipping infrastructure. So yeah. it was very heavy to get here. But It's yeah. true. Yeah. yeah. Luckily, we live so close to a prime we warehouse. Do. I think everyone lives close to a prime. That's now. true. At this point, yeah, everyone <laughs> They're does. They're everywhere. You're always within three kilometers or six miles from a, uh, I don't know what math I just did there, but I don't yeah, know what it is. from a Amazon warehouse yeah. and a Starbucks. Six miles is a lot more than three kilometers. I think it's 1.8 miles is six kilometers. Are you sure? If no, you know the answer, you can all. write into <laughs> no. the show at hello at the movie podcast.ca. But as always, you can catch a brand new episode of the movie podcast every single Monday and watch throughout the week especially this week we're gonna have a shit ton of stuff we got reviews we got interviews we got more reviews more (laughs) interviews special guests will be appearing on these reviews it's going to be phenomenal and don't forget to leave a five star rating after you just listen to this episode head to the to our page on apple Podcasts or on spotify give us a five star review leave a comment give us some feedback tell us how we're great Mm -hmm. and then you know, we can go on from there. I was I was close, by the way. The first time I said, "What didn't, didn't I say six kilometers, three miles?" You said no. You said six kilometers. You, no, you said three kilometers is six miles. I don't know what you said, Jay, man. Yeah. Truthfully, well, which is not six. Tr- six kilometers is three miles. Yeah, but you said three kilometers is six miles. Who's to say? You. Yeah, you said it. I, I you did. said it. I, I can't remember. I <laughs> you were close. You just flipped them. I, I, that's that's what I was. I was opposite day. Yeah, yeah. You guys don't remember? Check it's opposite calendars. day and it's Halloween. Yeah, that's why Anthony's hosting. It's a very confusing yeah. day for everyone. Exactly. Yeah. I'm I'm always confused. You, that's that's <laughs> why I'm <laughs> stealing. <laughs> cho- that's why I'm stealing chocolates from children instead of giving it to them. And how many kilometers did it take you to steal those chocolates? That's, oh, that's not not a lot, man. Like under a kilometer. Make sure to follow us at the Movie Podcast on Instagram, TikTok. Twitter and Letterbox, and f- subscribe to us on YouTube. Please go and like our videos. Go watch them. I make them. I'm the guy who makes those videos that make you enjoy them. Like them. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> I'll take your word for it. Yeah, I, I, I'll take your I, word I make for these for things dude. so you guys enjoy them. That's what I meant to say. Yeah, got you. I got um, you. What else? Oh, join us on discord because she if you if you don't join us on discord she's gonna cry because he, he has this, this checklist of questions that he has and he's like alex trebek he's figuring out oh how do Rest i a- ask these questions to these people are they gonna get it or are they not i'm gonna cry regardless so it doesn't matter and don't forget to write into the show at hello at the movie podcast.ca that was this time with the movie podcast and we'll see you next